is well equipped. Plenty of Russian tanks, for instance. Jersey was first to receive the royal visitors to the Channel Islands, and yachtsmen were the first to offer a welcome, as the royal barge brought the Queen and the Prince ashore to St Helier. Admiral Sir Gresham Nicholson, the Lieutenant Governor, and the bailiff, Sir Alexander Coutanche, received them at Albert Pier. Then the Queen and the Prince were on their way to Royal Square. All the islanders, together with holidaymakers, were out to cheer the Queen. An immensely popular occasion. And the scene recalled another joyful day in the Channel Islands' long history, Liberation Day in May 1945. In this film record of that great event, we see ships of the Royal Navy lying offshore. British troops landing to take over. Nazi troops who'd been in occupation since 1940, now on their way out. A Nazi admiral takes his departure, brushing his way past in grim silence. Arms now laid down by the enemy forces stacked up. What a wonderful moment this must have been for the people of the islands. The only British territory, by the way, to be occupied by Germany in World War II. Now, once again, the Channel Islands were part of the British Isles. With good reason, too, Jersey was en fête for the royal visit. The Queen had been there before, but this was her first visit as sovereign. At the Victoria Cottage homes, old folk had gathered from various homes in Jersey for the honour of presentation. They certainly offered a living testimonial to the healthy atmosphere of the Channel Islands. At Springfield, Her Majesty accepted the gift of a Jersey cow, Beecham Oxford Lady, which is to be added to the Windsor herd. At Government House, more presents, a model yacht for Prince Charles. A doll for Princess Anne, presented by 14-year-old Valerie Le Goupy. And on behalf of the people of the island, a